Hey, folks, we're sponsored today by Pond5, so listen up. This is great for podcasters, filmmakers, musicians, basically anyone who makes stuff. Pond5, that's P-O-N-D, and the number 5. You hearing this? It's an online marketplace for videos, images, audio, and other stuff that you can download instantly and use in your productions. They have the world's deepest library of royalty-free video with nearly 3 million clips. Go to Pond5.com and try searching for anything. I bet you find what you need. And through September 15th, use promo code WTF for 15% off all your purchases. That's Pond5.com, promo code WTF. And also, I just wanted to point out that our friends at Comedy Central have been killing it all summer with their new shows. And just because August is almost done doesn't mean they're finished. Tomorrow night, Daniel Tosh returns. It starts with the two-hour special Tosh.0 goes back to school at 8, followed by an all-new Tosh.0 at 10. And you can watch full episodes right now on the Comedy Central website or the Comedy Central app. All right? All right. Let's start the show. Lock the gate! All right, let's do this. How are you, what the fuckers? What the fuck, buddies? What the fucking ears? What the fuck sticks? What the fuck's the bulls? How are you? I'm Mark Marin. This is WTF. I am very excited to tell you that today on the show, uh, Wanda Sykes, who I've known for years, who I actually saw when she started back in New York, and, and I'm excited to uh, share this conversation I have with her because she's amazing. Now, let me just say one thing. At the very end of the interview, it's it's literally the last four seconds of this interview, you'll hear a change in the audio. I had a little problem with the recording, which happens very rarely, but uh, luckily I had an external mic going, but it wasn't plugged into the board. But you'll be able to hear me and Wanda saying goodbye, so don't be jarred. Don't think that I don't know what's happening. All right? Okay, so that prepare yourself for nothing. Four seconds, but I just want you to know that I'm aware of it. So what is happening? Uh, if you're new to the show... The most recent 50 episodes are always free. Six months episodes are free. But after that, they be, they they go on the app. They go behind a paywall on the app. So what you got to do is perhaps get the uh, the free WTF app and upload to premium. And uh, you can stream all of them. Every one of them. All right. Here's a couple of things going on. I will be at the Oddball Festival in Red Rocks in Denver, Colorado on September 7th. On September 12th, I'll be at the Oddball Festival in Mountain View, California, September 13th. Uh, oddball in Irvine, California, at the Verizon Amphitheater. And then I do a Texas run, September 19th in Dallas at the uh, Gexa Energy Pavilion, September 20th at the Cynthia Woods Mitchell Pavilion in Houston, and September 21st at the Austin 360 Amphitheater. Uh, then on November 7th, I will be at the New York Comedy Festival at the Skirball Center. You should get tickets to that because they are they are selling out. Uh, November 8th, I will be in Boston for the Comics Come Home uh, event. This is all at WTFPod.com if you'd like to check these dates. And as usual, if I am in town here in Los Angeles, I'm most likely at the Comedy Store on weekends. Okay, all that said, what's happening? All right, well, I went down to Charlotte. This would be about a week ago I got back. Every time I go to the American South, and I like to call it that, it gives us some historical context, I, I am enamored with it. Uh, I, I usually want to stay there. I usually would, I, I think I'd like to move here. There, there's something about it. There's something about whatever held it back, uh, initially, and I do think that they are progressing culturally, but whatever held it back and what, however it was judged for all these years has actually made it remain somewhat charming. Uh, very charming. It doesn't seem completely mollified. It does seem to have some rural appeal. It seems that, that people seem to, to actually integrate the cities, uh, from all class levels, from all types of lives. I don't, I don't see that too much. I mean, I see it a little in LA, but it's not as intimate here because it's all spread out. So I, I don't really know what's happening. You're in your car. Are. But uh, I'm always sort of charmed and excited to be down south. I also had a uh, an exciting food experience. Uh, uh, many of you know the what I call the 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 southern shame spiral uh, that I enter while I'm in the south, and usually for three to days to a week after getting back from the south because of of what I've eaten in the south. There's no way you're going to get out of North Carolina without being well cobbled. Uh, yeah, there's a cobbler situation down there. I was down there for Oddball Fest and, um, and the, uh, craft services or the catering at the uh, venue at the amphitheater 
had two kinds of cobbler and vanilla ice cream, so there was really no reason to eat dinner. Cobbler will happen. Grits will happen. Biscuits has to happen. Biscuits and gravy, you can do that. You're going to do that. Just, you know, accept it. Uh, this trip, collard greens happened. Mac and cheese definitely happened. Uh, bacon cupcakes, uh, bacon caramel apple cupcakes were brought to me. I'd like to thank that woman and also tell her that, uh, my life is going to be shorter because of her. I believe it was worth it. I, I'm, I'm on the fence about that, but I ate them. Okay. So here's, here's the story. I'm at this, uh, diner in, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. And I'm about to order my uh, my two eggs over hard uh, with uh, grits and a biscuit. I'm about to order those. I know some of you are saying, really, over hard? What kind of um, horrible person are you? Who who would eat eggs over hard? I'll tell you who. A guy who doesn't like runny fucking yolks. All right? Some days I can do it. Some days I can't. Some days I can't get past the fact that they're runny. I don't mind over hard eggs. I don't need to dip my fucking toast in yellow goo. All right. I like to eat my eggs over hard. I feel better when they're cooked. I don't mind it. And then I can put them on a biscuit without it running all over everything. There's something gross about yolks. Qu- quite honestly, there's something gross about eggs. And, and, and just get off my back. All right. Over hard's how I go. All right. Unless I'm feeling adventurous and feeling like, no, maybe over medium be nice with, with a little goo to them. Sometimes I'll take a little goo, but not full goo. All right, so I'm looking at the menu at this place, and I'm looking at the meats because I wasn't going to get a meat because I thought, like, I don't really need a meat. I'm doing the cholesterol thing already with the yolks that are hard, not runny. And in the list of meats there in Charlotte, North Carolina, it's, you know, bacon, sausage, I believe ham was making an appearance. And then the last meat on the list was liver mush. Liver mush. Liver mush. What the fuck is liver mush? I don't know what liver mush is. I've never seen those words together. There's nothing appetizing about those words separately. Together, just nasty. But I knew, well, I don't know what this is, and I wonder if anybody eats it. It must be some regional thing, and I, I can't imagine. Maybe they, they just have it on there for the old people. Sometimes if a diner's worth its salt, they'll have a couple of things on there, whether it's a Jewish diner, a Jew diner, or whether it's a Southern diner, where they got a couple of things on there that no one eats but your grandpa. So I said, uh, liver mush. You want to, I said that to a waitress. I said, what is, what is liver mush? And she, uh, I, uh, I believe I'll paraphrase here. She says, uh, yeah, I don't know if you'd like it if you didn't grow up with it. And I'm like, okay. So I'm getting a little information. There's a regional, uh, specialty or, or cuisine or, or slab of meat, uh, that, that is an acquired taste. And then there was another woman there who was working there and, and she said, I like it. I like it a lot. I grew up with it. And I'm like, okay, okay. But she says, but I don't know if you'll like it. I'm like, I'm getting it. I'm, you guys are assuming that I'm not going to like your weird, uh, you know, regional, uh, particle meat, which is, which is, I assumed is what it was. So of course I got to go back to my hotel room and, uh, you know, do some research on liver mush because I, you know, I've been to Scotland and Scotland's got some pretty gnarly meats and I, I'll try just about anything. I've tried haggis. I've tried blood pudding. I've tried, uh, the Lauren sausage. Uh, in Scotland, uh, you know, Scotland does a lot with meats, uh, or, or, or at least, you know, utilizing, you know, pieces of the animal that, uh, you know, might go unnoticed or actually thrown away. So I'm figuring it's in that family. And sure enough, I'm right. They actually believe that it goes back a little further to the German settlers in Appalachia before the Civil War. And it sort of kind of moved down from there. I, and uh, yeah, as you know, Germans are, are meat eating people. And uh, do a lot of work with the sausages and uh, that type of meat. Uh, you know, that's and that's a nice thing about Germans. They they do sausage and uh, and we know them for that brats. So as I read on, uh, basically liver mush is pig's liver and head meat. So basically these kind of foods, you know, generally devolve into something that Someone makes because they're like, don't throw that away. Don't throw that away. We can't afford to throw that. Just bring the pig head over here and scrape off the the meat and bring the innards too. So, so that's what that is. It, it's, and, and believe me, I understand, you know, the, the hunter's credo that I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's something around the, uh, the idea of eating the entire animal. And I, I believe that that's a, 
it's a noble and righteous thing to do is to, if you're going to honor the animal that you kill, uh, you should at least eat as much of it as possible. This was a thrifty creation. It's basically pig's liver, uh, head meat, and some other bits and pieces, you know, ground into a, a mush and then uh, formed into a brick, a sliceable brick of meat product that is, uh, you know, relatively thinly sliced and fried on a griddle. So now I know what it is, and I know another thing on a deeper level is that I have to try it. I have to try this stuff because that's who I am. I am not going to be surprised by a regional meat product and not put it in my fucking pie hole. So I work up the courage to try the liver mush. So the next morning, I go back into that diner. And I, I sit down and I'm sitting next to a woman and she's actually eating slabs of liver mush. And I'm like, I'm going to do it. So the waitress sitting next to me goes, you, you should get it crispy. I like it crispy. So they fry it crispy. So I get my, my grits and my biscuit and my eggs over hard and I get my liver mush and I cut a piece off and I'm like, that is not bad at all. As a matter of fact, it's good. But, but to be honest with you, the, you know, when you order these kind of things, or at least when I do a, a, a Yankee, a northerner, uh, a guy with a, a uh, slightly heightened palate, my brain thinks like, why would anyone eat this shit if you could afford not to? And I think that's a reasonable question. I think Southerners ask that question themselves, but most of them answer themselves with, oh, my grandma used to eat it and she made it for us. It's a nostalgic thing. And sometimes nostalgia is triggered by an acquired taste. I mean, I thought it was great. I mean, I, I loved it, really, but it's not every day loved it. But, you know, maybe when I'm down there again, I'll be like, I'm going to enjoy some liver mush. It's not unlike the region itself. It was interesting, rich, practical, and, and slightly disturbing. That's I can scratch that off the secret bucket list because I didn't know it was on there. Try liver mush. Check. Folks, computers are designed to make running a business easier, including your mailing and shipping. So just use stamps.com to get 24-hour access to the post office right from your computer. No waiting in line, no hassles. Stamps.com makes mailing and shipping easy. Just use the computer and printer you already have to get official U.S. postage for any letter, any package. Print the postage directly onto envelopes, labels, even plain paper. Then hand it to your mail carrier and you're done, people. There's no guesswork. Stamps.com will send you a digital scale that calculates the exact postage you need for any class of mail. I know you hear me talking about it a lot, and I'm sure you think, I bet he doesn't really use it. I do use it. It makes life easier, and so I'll keep using it. Right now, use my promo code WTF for this special offer. Start a no-risk trial with a $110 bonus offer that includes the digital scale and up to $55 of free postage. Don't wait, people. Go to stamps.com before you do anything else. Click on that microphone at the top of the home page and type in WTF. That's stamps.com. Enter WTF. Okay? Okay. Very excited to uh, finally get Wanda Sykes into the garage. I've always loved her. I remember her when she started. I remember her when she was Wanda Sykes Hall. I remember Wanda. I was already an established comic when she started, and she used to just come in with her husband at the time, do her set. She was meek and polite in a lot of ways. What an evolution to the uh, the comedic force that she has become. And uh, And we talk about everything, and it's great. So let's go now. To my conversation with uh, Wanda Sykes. So Sherman Oaks, I mean, like, so would you just come on the one thirty four? Yeah, yeah, come over? yeah. It wasn't a bad drive, and my office is in uh, Glendale, so it was really that, easy. Yeah. I know that building, your office building, because I was in that office building. Oh yeah, okay. That weird ass building. Uh huh. The the um, the uh, Hollywood. Well, yeah, Hollywood Productions. Yeah. where if you're on one side, you're on the fifth floor. Right. On the other side, it's you're on the fourth It's just a weird building. It's, it's very weird. And then there's offices there where you're like, what's going on in there? <laughs> it's like, I know there's porn. Yeah, right. If somebody's <laughs> adding porn in there. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. And there's, it's, it got to be. Some offices that. are just a guy sitting there. You're like, what is that guy doing? 
next to our office, there was a talent agent that I, I didn't know what that meant. Anybody yeah, can do anything right. in this town. So, um, well, I'm excited you're here, Wanda. I'm excited to be here, Because Mark. I feel like, um, it's weird, because I remember you, like, I feel like I met you when you were just growing up in comedy. True. You were, you were this, this woman that came with straight hair. Uh-huh. And a, a pear-shaped man. Right. <laughs> Who would who would sit patiently? I don't know about patiently. I, I, I remember seeing a few, uh, hearing a few, you know, oh, finger really? taps. And, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It was just, but like I, and then all of a sudden you became, you know, Wanda Sykes. Before it was like Wanda Sykes Hall, and you're very polite, and you're very quiet, and you're almost like mousy on stage, uh-huh. a little submissive. It, yeah. yeah. And uh-huh. then all of a sudden it's like, who's this? What? When did this happen? <laughs> who's this new person? <laughs> You know, like I don't know. Well, we could get to that, but I don't even know where uh, you where you came from. What was the what was the journey? Where'd you grow up? Um, I grew up in Virginia, but only until like the third grade, and then my family we moved to to Maryland. Ooh, big move, right? Yeah. Uh, my dad, yeah, my dad was in the military, so like a, like a big deal in the military. Um, he ended up being a big deal. Really? Yeah, yeah retired uh, colonel. A colonel. Yeah. yeah. So he was like Old a lifer. Colonel. Yeah. Oh so, yeah. So you grew up in the military your whole life, right? And your mom did was she uh, also in? She um she started off in like uh like a major newspaper in Virginia like the Virginia Pilot. She Writing. Was in, she was in the no like the, she worked for like the classified uh-huh. section, classified uh, ad section. Uh-huh. And then uh when we moved to Maryland, she stayed home because you know we didn't have that that family support system right, of right. relatives taking care of us and stuff right, while, yeah. she, while she worked. So she stayed home for a while. And then uh, when we we when I got to the age where she felt like, you know, that I was old enough where she could uh, hang a key around my neck yeah. and let me, you know, yeah. go home right. after school by right. myself, which is terrifying. I do. You the, know? Th- the thought of it now. It's weird. Isn't like, that crazy? I don't. I. I don't know if, if the fear needs to be there, but it is. It is. Like when we were kids, my grandmother would let me take the train, the bus into New York. Fourteen. <laughs> Go ahead, take. Have a good time. Just get on the subway when you get out of Port Authority. Fourteen. You know, like Port Authority. Right. And who would do that? It's crazy. I guess we need to be afraid. Yeah. I guess we do. I mean, you have kids, right? Oh yeah. Are you terrified? They're I mean, terrified. How old are they? They're five. Yeah, well, you can't just throw a key around a five-year-old. Not, not at all. <laughs> not, I, I mean, we the backyard. It's yeah. it's fence. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we have a nice fence. Yeah, back fence then backyard. Don't go beyond the fence. If they're out back, I still have to be able to see them. Right. You don't right. know what could jump the fence. Or yeah, well, there's other. Know. Yeah, they could fall down or whatever. But I, <laughs> I mean, the fear of someone jumping the fence right. is a little much. But I understand. Right. It's a little much, but it's there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to deny it. Right. I have it. Well, no, I have weird fears, too, and I don't even have kids. I have fears that uh, something from space is going to fall onto my bedroom. <laughs> like, I'm going to be woken up by space garbage. I mean, it's ridiculous. I can't even go to sleep sometimes. I, but it's not about me. I, mean, so, I can see, like, a satellite dish. You right, know, right. Well, no, like, literally, well, like, like a Direct thing. TV, I'm talking. I'm not talking about from space. I'm, oh, not, no. I'm not talking right, about that, no. from the, you know. No, I'm talking yeah. about, like, a piece comes off a, an air, a spacecraft uh-huh. and just comes down. That's how special I think okay. I am, that I'm going to be the one hit by space junk. Well, well don't go see Gravity, man, because it's, you, I you did know. see it. Okay, That's so scary, it's all right? that stuff. So did you grow up with a, in a big family? No, just, um, um, I just have an older brother. Oh, That's yeah? It's just two of us. Where'd he end up? He's in uh, Virginia. Is he like what? Is he in the yeah, military? You know what? He he works for um, a co- a contractor. Yeah, with oh, government the, things. Oh, government yeah, contractor. and that's and that's all he tells me. I have no idea. Yeah, those mysterious yeah. government yeah. contracting right. jobs. Something like that could be up to no good. Could be great. Could be, yeah, top secret either way. Who knows? <laughs> he could be, you know, well, you're, you're, shredding paper, or he right. could be building computer systems. That's right. I have no idea yeah, what or he doing does. Or doing an all-cash business somewhere in yeah. Pakistan. Who knows? Yeah, whatever. The government's, you know, they're yeah. behind it, so I guess yeah. it's okay. Yeah, as long as he's happy. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> That's all that matters. His morality is not your issue. It's like, what makes a guy happy? <laughs> but if if your dad was in the military, I mean, that's like a very specific type of childhood, isn't it? I mean, don't you have to behave? Is he sitting at dinner in uniform? I mean, how's no, that? No, oh. you, but I, I, I really appreciated my father's approach to it because it was uh, a job, you know, an, yeah. an honorable job, right? You know, um, but he didn't. I, it, he didn't really bring it home that you know he didn't. Right. I mean, he didn't run our house like a, a camp or like you know, right? Um, 
so yes, you know, it was so we didn't have that. And also we we never lived on on post. We never lived on the base. You would he, Yeah, I mean, he always wanted us to to, you know, just go to whatever the neighborhood right, school was. Right. We never like lived got uh, yeah. base housing. I think it also it was uh financially better for him because he'd rather take the, you know, get the allotment of the Right. For the living. For housing, yeah. yeah and you get a decent house. But you were yeah. living outside of DC? Uh yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. the biggest way, base. Way that's sort of a, mm-hmm. a base in itself. Right. We were closer to Annapolis. Uh-huh. Yeah. And what, where did he end up? Where did he go to work every day? He, uh, Fort Meade. Yeah. He would go to Fort Meade and then uh, the Pentagon. So he was going back and forth between. The Pentagon. Yeah. And I mean, see, and, and that's the thing. Like, okay, first he's at Fort Meade and then his, you know, that tour is up. So it's now to get his next duty yeah so we're all like oh god you know yeah, my brother yeah. and i like are we going to germany yeah. you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. i'm going to japan where are we going yeah. you know and uh it, we're going i'm going to the pentagon <laughs> you know our family all of our friends and stuff Down we're, the we're street, had dad. yeah, we're yeah. Up, also their dads or whatever in the military they're, they're taking off packing up right no nope. nope not for you we're just staying right here what, what do you know what his role was in the pentagon at one point I know he did something for uh, the secretary of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. I know he he worked for whoever right. that guy yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, the big military stuff. Some, yeah. Yeah, and he's retired now, or yes, and he's still yes. around though. Yes, yes, he just turned eighty. Yeah, and where yeah. did they? Where's your Where's your family come from? Um, Virginia. This is all Virginia. Yeah. Do you have family there still? Mm-hmm. Yeah, my parents they moved back once did they you? once they retired. They moved back. I don't really have a sense of Virginia. Is it uh, lovely? There's parts. Yeah. Yeah. If you, you just make sure you you can always see it, see some water. That's it. You know, like, that that inward stuff. I no, no, no not yeah. comfortable. I'm not comfortable. Yeah. That's still a little it, dicey. It gets a little, it gets a little dicey around yeah. Roanoke and oh, all. Does you it? Know? Yeah. Even if you you're know, wearing a key around l- your neck. A Lynchburg. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah. It's in the name. You know what I mean? I know they say everything's okay. Yeah. I get I get uh-huh. uh, a little flack for shitting on the South occasionally, but I, I have to be honest. As much as I've grown to love the South. There's still some parts that are kind of, kind of scary. Oh yeah, even for me. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. And I'm making it up. Right. In my head. So 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 imagine me. I know. <laughs> driving through Mississippi. Do you, really I, you know, feel I, that? I hell yeah. Really? Yes. Is I it, think all black people feel that historically. Not, historically, yeah. who are not from yeah. the south, but maybe even the ones who live in the south. I mean, yeah. you you go there, and you look around. If you get a dirty look. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. And me, I have to try to figure out what's what's the dirty look about. Is yeah. it because I'm black? Is yeah. it because I'm a black woman? Yeah. Is it uh, the gay thing? Yeah. You could hate me on so many different levels. Well, I got to tell know? you, if, if you're driving through the <laughs> South and, and someone on the side of the road goes like, "That's she's gay, then like, you, <laughs> your advertising, like, I don't think they're that perceptive. That, you don't think so? No. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Not unless you tell them. If I was like, you know, yeah, making out with a, with oh, my well, wife, on, yeah, yeah. yeah, then they would, yeah. I think that would tip them. Well, if you got out of the car yeah. and said, is there a problem? Is it because I'm black, a woman, or gay? Where, where are we at? What are you mad about? <laughs> But I, I guess I, I, I think that's probably true, and it's interesting that no matter how much progress is made, that there's going to be a, a, a certain line that you cross into certain states. If you're black, you're going to be like, this historically not a good place. No. I don't, I don't care if they're yeah. happy. I don't care if I see other black people. There's something. There, it's they, something. They might not be there on their own will. Right. Right. <laughs> they, they have to be there. <laughs> how long did it take you to get to, to comedy? I mean, what did you study in school? In school, I studied, uh, studied marketing. Because basically, in college, you went yeah, to college? Yeah, I went to college, went to Hampton University. Yeah. And I studied, uh, got a degree in marketing, and it's basically because I didn't know what the hell else I wanted to do. That's one of those degrees. That's one Communications, of those degrees. Yeah, give me marketing, one of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Business. Yeah. yeah. So you learned just, right. anything? Um, Actually, yes. Yeah. As far as like, like business-wise with the- You had skills of some Yeah, kind? I yeah. did. Yeah. Did you end up using them? Did you work? Um, I use them in in this business. But did I, you I like after to, college? Did oh, you... after college, I ended up working for the government. I ended up, you know, well, first I started off in in uh, retail. I think I worked for um, Hex. It was Hex Department Store. Oh yeah, it was kind of like it's like Macy's Light. Yeah, yeah. And I worked there, um, and I was getting into their, you know, like management trainee program. Yeah. And then I realized, like, I, you know. <laughs> 
I don't want to fold clothes all day. <laughs> I don't want to hang up stuff all. I don't even like clothes that much. What the hell am I doing? I, there's that moment. It's, yeah. I'm not the, a fashionista. What yeah. the hell am I doing? It's not the last straw. It's the last shirt. Yeah, exactly. Uh, right. This is it. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and then and, you ended up for the government. Yeah. So from there, I ended up. Uh, I had my applications and resumes out and everything for uh, different government positions. I wor- worked at um, uh, Walter Reed. Oh, the, the hospital? Uh, yeah, but it was a research center. Yeah. So I worked for them for a while, and I, but as a purchasing agent. Yeah, not and as then, a... And then from there, I went to, to uh, NSA. National yeah. Security Administration? Mm-hmm. Can you talk a- about it? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> I think. Are, are you allowed? It's, it's, it's like, it's so long ago that yeah. I'm sure whatever I know yeah. is, is like... Public information. Meaning, yeah, it's, yeah by now. Well, but was there a time where you're like, they told you like... Can't talk. Oh about. hell yeah! Really? Yeah, that's the, that's your first day. That's really? that's orientation. Really? Yeah, man. Yeah, if you if you once you get that top secret, um, you, you know clearance. clearance. Yeah, actually, I have a, a I had a clearance that's above top secret because of the nature of, of the uh, projects that I was working on. Really? Yeah, I was like doing Desert Storm. I was uh, I, like logistically, you know, doing. You know, doing some stuff, moving uh-huh. some things around. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, so you were, but, but it, was, it was all buying things. It was I was purchasing. Oh, agent. so that was yeah. the department. Yes. So they're uh, so they're uh, so it was more like sort of like you don't have to let anyone know that we bought those. Right. That kind of thing. Uh, yeah. It was but, it's all secure. Yeah. yeah. But were yeah. there ever, ever moments where you're looking at it, it's like, what do they need these for? Why do they need uh, women's underwear? <laughs> <laughs> Two boxes of women's underwear. That doesn't make any sense. Wife beaters. This yeah. is crazy. <laughs> a case of wife beaters. Yeah, all right. No, no, no. All but right. that's interesting, though. They're like you got to you sworn to secrecy under the law, right? Because I mean, because a lot of things, you know, we would just get these schematics. You know, right. like well, I had no idea what yeah this thing did, but right. it was right here. We need this this thing. Yeah, go out and find out. How much it will cost to to build this thing? So you didn't know what it was. Dude. I, yeah, I was like, was all right, numbers. yeah, yeah. I mean, I just looked to see if there was like anything that had like one of those handles, you know, like when you blow up stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hmm, let me see. That, like, could, that could be a handle. I don't that's know. That's right. With the with the yeah. with the name Acme on the right, box. right, yeah. right, right. So, so you 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 didn't really know what what was no going idea. on, but you still had to have security clearance. Exactly. And and uh, what what made you stop working for the government? I guess your dad probably said that it's probably a good line of work. Oh you get, yeah, stay in. Just one way or the other, exactly. get your pension. I know. But it, I I got. I think I was a. I think I was a GS nine or GS eleven. Yeah. When I left, what I does can't that remember. mean? That's, That's just your a... grade and pay. Oh yeah. Yeah. So what made you stop that? Um, I started doing a real shitty job at it. You know, I just was like, you lost your. Yeah, I lost. I lost focus the, and... the focus, and you know, it was like a file, and you know, a contract would come in, and I was like, Ugh, yeah. Uh, what time is yeah, happy yeah. hour? I'll, I'll get to this tomorrow. No, so you're... And, and I was like, you can't. You can't operate like that in that yeah. position you just can't so you you're know? already sold dead yeah just i'm like, like nah i gotta get it. out of it yeah and, and then i looked around it was like other people who've been there for like uh, 20 years and just, just reading the paper and dying uh, at their death. dying dying uh, at their desk it yeah. was like uh, awful I, yeah it's like so, i gotta get out of so here. then what happens next where does i well i was still there were you married at that time point no not yet but no 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 not yet i i was I was still there, but uh, I got the comedy bug. You know, I heard about a a, a contest on the radio on a radio station about you know, yeah. a talent show and yeah. comedy had was one of the categories. And I don't know. I said, you know, I want to. I'm gonna see if I can get into this thing. Really? Yeah. It was just like, that. You, just like that. Just like that. Did you like comics? Did you? Yeah. Oh, like, I love comedy. Yeah. So, so that it was already in you that right. But you never thought that it was a job you could necessarily do. Did um, you? I had when you did know you what? Start? Here's the thing, and and I. I, I've, I've never really said this because yeah. it, it could come across as as like a, a put down, but it's not meant yeah, to be. Right. But I remember watching um, Whoopi Goldberg's HBO special yeah. Around the World yeah. and in, in 80 Days, whatever. So I was watching that and yeah. I was laughing a lot, but something said, hey, I can do this. Yeah. She can do it. Yeah, yeah but, <laughs> but also, it's not as a diss. It's as, right. you know, it's especially. She made it seem easy. It, yeah. Like it, it became something tangible mm-hmm. to me. A black woman right. doing an HBO special performing in front of all, all these people. Right. 
and it made it right. you know seem like oh you know what I can do this right someone's yeah. doing it exactly it's a job available right. exactly so Whippy did it right have you met her since yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and, and uh, did, did you tell her that um no I don't think so I yeah. don't think I told her that no I, I have no idea what she's like yeah. I mean she's could, cool well, she's she, cool yeah very cool <laughs> I don't I don't think there's anything. <laughs> I don't think like what you see, the persona that you see on TV is different from what oh, really? I've I've encountered. Uh-huh. Yeah, she's cool. Because she's interesting because she started, I think, as a one man, sh- one person show thing, right. one woman show. I think she used to do it at the comedy store mm-hmm. and she'd do characters like mm-hmm. she I don't like I don't get the feeling that she came up and stand up the same way you did necessarily. I think right, she was no, always doing so. characters and putting together big shows. Yeah. And you sometimes forget that that's you know she was a, a stand up. Yeah. So exactly. okay, so you, so but, you I mean, but, but before Whoopi though, it's like you know, uh, Mom's Mabley she was huge to me. Really, as a kid, yeah. The I can see that. Brothers. That makes sense. Yeah. Mom's Mabley makes sense. Yeah, the Who Smothers the... Brothers. I mean, I, I used to watch all that stuff. But that's like up. seriously old school. I mean, oh, how, yeah, yeah. how old do you do you tell uh, me? No, I'm fifty. I just turned fifty. I'm fifty two. Yeah, and, or not fifty two. I'm fifty as well. Also, yeah, and. And Mom's Mabley's still before our time. So right. did your old man have those records? How'd you see that stuff? Um, I she, remember, I remember seeing her on on shows. Like, yeah, maybe. Yeah, like, we when she was, it real was back old. then. Yeah, it was like a. Uh, maybe um, she was on the Smothers Brothers. Or yeah, yeah, she was on the Smothers Brothers. She was on because I remember watching the Smothers Brothers. Yeah. Because my grandmother would get mad at uh. And how uh, uh, Tommy uh-huh. was being treated. She just, you know, that just annoyed her. She was like, that that boy, I, I should, I should want to just beat him bad one day. She would just, and I was like, and it would make me laugh. Even as a kid, I knew it was an act. Right. But was, she just, oh. Took it literally. Just took it literally. That was her take yeah. on it. It wasn't yeah. a comedy. It wasn't even comedy. It just was <laughs> just bad behavior. Just, just. <laughs> Well, who was I wonder where Mom's made because I know Flip Wilson show. I remember that. I mean, we were really young. Yeah, for Flip Wilson. Yeah, and he come out dancing, uh-huh. right uh-huh. in the big lights. Flip right. Wilson, right? Pygmy Markham. Pygmy Markham was on laughing because here comes the judge. Here comes, here the, comes judge. the judge. Yeah, they did that. Yeah. Well, that, Flip start. Flip Wilson started doing. Here comes the judge. Is that who was doing it? He started doing it. From and that wasn't his, but no one called him a thing. Right. <laughs> I know, right? And then he did Geraldine. I remember mm-hmm. this stuff vaguely. Yeah. So those were the ones that kind of planted a seed in your head. Yeah. And then Whoopi made it a practical thing. Were you like, who were the other people as you grew up? Do you remember watching yeah, other comics? Carlin. Right. I love George Carlin. Yeah, yeah. Richard Pryor. Yeah. Uh, Cosby. Well, what was it Bill like Cosby. in in terms of what, how you grew up in, in 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 what was the black community you grew up in? I mean, like in terms of like was Pryor part of it? Like when Pryor came out, like did your parents, did your friends listen? No, to- you know what? My parents, they, they had a few party a- a- albums. That's what they call party, fa- yeah. party albums. Yeah, I think they had a, had a Red Fox album, but we, I didn't, I didn't get to listen to things until I would go over, over to my friend's house. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, but like a couple of uncles, they had, you know, yeah, they had the party. They were dirty. They, yeah, then. yeah, they had the party out. Yeah, that's what they were called, party mm-hmm. albums. Red mm-hmm. Fox put out like a dozen of those things, right? Those party albums, right? So they were grown up stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, so you're working for the government. Your soul is dying. Mm-hmm. You see Whoopi Goldberg. You hear about a, a a contest, right? And what do you do? I sat down, and wrote some jokes. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, and I went down to the it was the the classics nightclub in D.C. and I went there, and uh, and I auditioned. Yeah. And he said, "Okay, yeah, great. I'm gonna put you on the show." I'm like, "All right, cool." And I and that was it. I yeah. got on the show, killed. I didn't win. Uh, I think Tony Woods he beat me. Tony Woods was the other comic. It was like Tony. three comics. Yeah, it was like three comics. Tony Woods won that night. Oh. But um, the guy who was emceeing Andy Evans, he uh was like you know where, where who are you and where'd you come from because they I, right you know didn't go to any of the clubs a, that was pro- the first time right that anyone had seen me were you the only like amateur on the show or was I, it mostly local comedians it was local comedians right. yeah was it, was some from the dc area yeah so it was tony mm-hmm. and i don't know who else was down the show Greg was Poole, yeah. uh no Chappelle wasn't Too on the young. show but Chappelle was on Chappelle was around but he must have been 12 Chappelle, like, Chappelle, like 16 like, years old Maybe fourteen, I guess. 14, Crazy. 15. Chappelle was around. Because, Following Tony around. I, yeah, well, <laughs> right? Wasn't that his? Wasn't that his original mentor? I well, think he didn't. I, I think Chappelle and Tony didn't really uh, 
start like, hanging out yeah. until they until he got to New York. I think once oh, Chappelle, is that true? I think so. Because I got the feeling that well, maybe you know, of course, we were all around Tony, you know, in D.C. and all. But I think when Chappelle, Dave Edwards too, right? Yeah, Dave, Dave Edwards. I wonder what happened to that? Yeah. Kid. What happened to that yeah, kid? I don't know. Yeah. Once, once he got kicked off of uh, <laughs> of the, the real world. That was the end of it. Ki- uh, yeah. yeah. And Tony Woods, all, there's always going to be Tony Woods. Like, oh, yeah, Tony Woods. Yeah. Wait, yeah. what? How's he doing? <laughs> he's so funny, man. I know. He was, he's so funny. It's just, one of those guys where you're sort of like, why is get, it? Just get your shit together, <laughs> man. That's, you know, it's like you have all the all the pieces uh, to the puzzle are right there. Just, it just put it together. It's so weird when that happens, but you know, know, in comedy, you see it a lot. You're like, come on, right? Come, what? And who they and people can't you can't just tell people that because they're like, I'm doing everything I can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, all my stuff's in my car. <laughs> <laughs> So that's all you can do, I guess. Yeah. All right. So, so what happens after the contest? You quit your job? Uh, not yet. Yeah. Not yet. But I start. Go- I start going to the clubs. You mm-hmm. know, the, the hanging and, out. Yeah. Andy Evans told me, "You can. You have to come to the clubs. You got to work out. Uh, you know, Thursday nights. Come to the the cafe, comedy cafe. Yeah. Did you ever work comedy cafe at, at the DC? very end? Okay. It was the like the last week, I think. Didn't that guy own a strip club? Yeah. Too? It was right. all in the same building. Right. It was. It was club. Right. I mean, comedy club, sports bar, yeah. and then and then strip. Right. Yeah, I did. I think I worked it the last week it was open. Okay. And it was not a good week for me. Yeah. (laughs) I can imagine. (laughs) (laughs) What, what, was it ever a good club? Yeah, it was. It was. And you started there? Mm hmm. Started Mm -hmm. there and then over to Garvin's. Then I started doing, uh, like one nighters for Chip Franklin. Well, see, that's the one nighter thing that, like, a lot of people on the West Coast don't, I I don't know that that's part of your story if you came up in New York anywhere. Right. There was always one nighters in places. Like, I came up in Boston. That's how you started. Yeah. You just drive to wherever the fuck it was. Right. You don't don't know what you're walking into. Not at all. And it's what's going to happen in here. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you're doing that? You're opening for uh-huh. people? Uh-huh. For like traveling headliners? Yep. Do you remember the first time you opened for a person? You're like, holy shit, this guy's got the goods. Like, do you wow. like, I, I mean, cause I remember opening for people and the, there's two things that happen. They're like, how come this guy isn't bigger? <laughs> and oh, then you, is this the life that I'm going to lead? You, you know, know like, what? at the comedy cafe, um, uh, I opened for, um, uh, for Brian, Brian Regan. Oh, yeah, that's great. And I was like, man, this guy is so, so funny. funny. How do you get that funny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that feeling you get with him, right? Like, I, I still get that. Like, how yeah. do you, how do you stay that funny? Yeah, that must. He's have been still great. killing it. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. still killing it. Yeah. So, all right. So, when do you like uh, commit your life to the comedy? Once I became a middle act. Right. Once I became a middle act and I saw that I could, you know, travel. Right. Make a decent, you know, decent right. enough money to yeah. survive. Yeah. That's when I said, you know what? I'm, I'm out of here. Yeah. And, and where'd you go? Um, went to, I want to be closer to, to New York. So Keith Robinson and I were good friends, you know, so, um, he's out of Philly. Keith was living in Philly. I was living in Maryland at the time. I love Keith. And yeah. And was like, let's go, let's go to New York. So we said, okay. All right. Cool. So we picked a date. And we, uh, at that time, I, that's when I got married. I got married before All right, moving so, to. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. Oh, so, God, really? Well, <laughs> well just as it, like. It, okay, okay. Just out of my own curiosity. Right. Because, I mean, you're out. Uh huh. Now, when did you know? No. Going, you had no idea. Well, okay, I'll put it this way. Uh, yeah, where'd say, you meet him? Let's say I dabbled. Yeah. I dabbled. What, uh, in college? Yeah, well, out, out of college. Yeah. 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 Maybe. You know, so you had it. Right. Something. Yes. I knew something was there. But, was, but then, you know, it's like, ooh, I can't yeah. do that. Yeah, what are you doing? Well, you know, I was raised in the church and all that. Oh, it's really? like, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, oof, what, what, what are you doing? Really? Yeah. That's what stopped you, the yes, church? I think so. And also the whole idea, it's sort of like, well, that's a whole lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> I, oof, I got to get a new wardrobe. <laughs> I got to, oh, man. This is. This. <laughs> got to deal with another woman. <laughs> oh, boy. You know, there's too much conversation. So it's it wasn't just, all consuming. It right. It was just there. Right. So when your husband, now when, I mean, you don't need to. And plus, I've been dating guys all since. And you it was know, okay. All, yeah, 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 yeah. It's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> was what it was. You know, it it was it was it was it was good for, uh, with you know un- until I when I had the other thing to compare it to, and I was right. like, oh, what the right. hell yeah, was I doing yeah. back then? That was. Oof. So where'd you meet your husband? I worked with his sister. So you you meet him, you date, and you, and you get married. Yeah, moved to 
moved to Jersey with him to, to and Keith. And Keith, Keith yeah. is living with you guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's you and your husband <laughs> and Keith. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Where'd you meet Keith? He's from Philly. Um, Keith, where did we meet? It was either at a club in Baltimore or a club in D.C. But you know, the Philly guys, they would either drive down to. Right, DC or right. you know whatever. You didn't date to Keith, do. did you? Oh no, no, yeah. no. It was so Keith and I. We've always been friends from the jump. Now he tried. It was so funny. He he was uh, he yeah he 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 tried. He tried to put a couple of moves on me, and I was like, Keith, please, no, no. This the is, greatest. This, the, the, ugh, yeah. this is not gonna work. And then I told him, and he t- he always says this broke his heart. I told him that if uh, I said, you know what, even if we did date or whatever, I, I said I would I would totally cheat on you. You're just somebody that you just cheat on. You Poor do. Keith, because <laughs> that's the best part of his story is like he's a failed pimp. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like he wanted to be a pimp, but he couldn't get over on the girls, and they take advantage of him. I love that story. Yeah, that's it, he's so funny. Yeah, that's the, that's really what makes him like so so endearing. Is that like? He he puts on this big effect, right? But like, right. just it's, a sweet, insecure he's guy a in there, sweetheart. Yeah. He really is. So okay, you're living in Jersey with your husband and, and Keith, Keith. And, and, right. and and apparently like, your husband is driving you to the clubs because that's the one thing I remember. When did you start going into New York? As soon as we got there, as soon as, as soon as we got to, uh, so that was probably in '92, I guess, is right. when I started popping up in the clubs in in New York. Yeah, yeah. And where, where are you going? Uh, Boston, Boston Comedy Club. So that's where yeah. I first saw it. That's yeah. a, that room where like, you know, everybody kind of was able to get on. It was like right. the, the only room in the, in the city where you didn't have to, the auditioning process wasn't that difficult. Not at all. You just had to, you know, you know, ask Jason Stein. Yeah, yeah just say hi to Jason. <laughs> just be nice to Jason. <laughs> and he'll throw you off. Yeah. You want to go on? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to. Okay. Eight people. There's always like eight to 12 people. Right. Except on more, the weekends. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's bad when there's more comics in the right. room than, and the, than on, audience. On that back on balcony. Whole back, yeah. yeah. All comics, comics. And there's like nine people right. who are all just chomping at the mm-hmm. bit to get on. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. I, it's so funny that I just remember you hanging out with that with your husband who didn't talk. Yeah. I remember he he, <laughs> he had this thing. He didn't like uh uh guys hugging me or or, or the other comics or whatever. Like if your comics would, you right. know, hey want to hug and yeah, maybe yeah. give you you know, we got kissed each other on yeah, the cheek yeah, or whatever. Yeah. That would drive him nuts. Really? Nuts. So he was a possessive guy. Yeah. And that's well, why he, he was issues. and that's why he was there. Pretty much. But you never cut him loose. He was always there. I- how you gonna cut a big motherfucker like that loose? I mean, you can't be like. <laughs> he was, but he was sort of doughy big. He wasn't, you know, it wasn't yeah. like ripped. I don't, you know, I, I know you may, you know, we have to talk too bad about yeah, it. But I what was yeah. his job? You know, here, here's the thing. Overall, really nice guy, very yeah. smart, just frustrated. He was just a frustrated guy. Just didn't know what, you know, just needed to land someplace. Right. That's all. As far as, as far as career and everything. So. You know, it it just didn't yeah, right. it just didn't sure. work out. Well, so, so all right, so you start going to the cellar, which is where I mm-hmm. remember the most, because like Esty and you are uh, Esty who who yeah. books the cellar now are 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 great friends. Yes. But like I remember when he started working there. So like at that time, you know, she would use me sometimes. Mark Cohen was around. Louis, Atel, mm-hmm. Keith. Uh, you know, and then that whole scene, you know, Colin, you know, and then, you know, all those people. And then you started coming around. And I just remembered there was. Well, I, at- I got into the cellar before Keith got into the cellar. Right. Yeah. But I remember mm. watching you specifically and like you always were funny, but like you were, you were sort of like poised uh-huh. and your confidence, like you were, it was very joke focused. Uh huh. You weren't, you know, you didn't have any looseness to right. you. Right. Right. And you were very polite off stage yes. and uh-huh. very composed and sort of grateful. And deferring to these other comics in, in in the way that you were just nice and you seemed to be thrilled to be part of it. Right. Am I wrong? No, I, that's that's true. That's true. Yeah. So, like, what happened, you know, to, to sort of, because you, you're radically different than you were then in I, a way. I think, you know, it's, I started talking about what was real and truthful to me. You, know, Do you I think remember that moment? Authentic. Yeah, it was, it was going through the, through the divorce. That that you know that the end of that marriage and and going through the divorce, uh, it was really liberating. It was like wow, okay, now you know I don't have to answer to anyone. Right you know? now, when you went through the divorce, was it because of your sexuality or just other problems? Just other problems. Oh right, so it other was a, just the the natural yeah. breakdown. Yeah, but when but when you know the the final straw, then I was like, okay, this is it, I'm out. Uh, 
it was it was very liberating. It right. felt like, you know, the chains had come off and it's like, wow, okay. Right, right. And you know, immediately it it hit me. I was like, I'm a beautiful girl. Yeah. You know, it was like <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, so you it, found it your was. confidence. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you were able to, to sort of like have your own voice. I tried it. Yeah. I was like, hey, I tried to make it work. I tried it, you know. Right. But do what you're supposed thing, to do, but right. now. Fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but because I have to assume that like, you know, having that dude, you know, riding you or, or just being there, mm-hmm. you're always going to check yourself. So there's no way to have a voice if you're constantly in relation. Right. Cause I've been in that too. Like, you know, you don't, you don't want to get off stage and have them go like, well, why would you say that about me? Exactly. Or, yeah, were you exactly. talking about me? And then you have to exactly. go like, no, it's general. I'm just trying to. So like that whole thing is that a nightmare. Thing. Yeah. Like, the, the very least, I, I think I always felt bad for you because like most of us are like, I'm not going to take my chick to the club, you know, because, you know, how am I going to talk about her if she's sitting right I there? Know. So that must have just drove you exactly. crazy. Yes. How much fighting did you do about your material? A lot. Right. A and lot. so you made the choice. You had to make the choice. Yeah. You're like, I'm, I'm out. Mm-hmm. And but did you, are you guys okay now or no? No. Well, yeah. <laughs> with that, you know, yeah, it was done. like I, I don't. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, wasn't even that we, long. We, we don't have any kids. We right. don't have any pets or anything to share. So right. it was like, okay, bye, bye. And right. That's, that's, that's so you it. St- all right. So you start talking about you know you know finding your own place in the world and divorce mm-hmm. and stuff and your whole style changes. Yeah. You get a little dirtier. Yep. <laughs> Get, a little, yeah, yeah, more honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and what started to happen from that? Like, when did you start getting opportunities? Because I, 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 I know Louie always used it, but what was the first break? Uh, the Chris Rock show. Uh-huh. Yeah. You got divorced and then got the Chris Rock show. No, actually, I got the, the Chris Rock show. And yeah. then, yeah. And then, uh, so then like a, that well, probably maybe like two, I think I was like two seasons in. And Chris Rock show, and, and then got divorced. Well, was he? He must have been jealous because, of that. Well, of course. Yeah. And not only that, was coming to you know every taping right. of the show, right? And then you know Chris's show, we were pretty out there. We did some edgy stuff, and then he would. And you're busy. And yes, and then he he would critique <laughs> the show and say, you know, oh, I don't know why you did that bit. Right. You shouldn't do it better. Uh, did you write that joke? Yeah. You shouldn't have written. I was like, oh, oh my yeah. god, it's just. Did it's, Chris say yeah. anything about it? No, I I so tried to keep them, you know, as far apart as as possible. And so, who, who, I mean, of course, the guys will all joke me, right. joke on me, at the you know, right. at the office, right. which was pretty funny. Right. So, the, so yeah. it was the original Chris mm-hmm. Rock show. So mm-hmm. who was on that? Louis, Louis, uh, Jeff Stilson, Sklar, Schultz Sklar, Agna. Uh, Tom came later. Uh huh. He wasn't the original. Was um, um, uh, Ali Leroy, Leroy Lance, Lance Crowther, Crowther. Yeah. Lance was Pooty Tang. John Heyman, yeah. John Heyman, that sounds right. Yeah. So what was that like? What was that ex- uh, that experience like when you know, like, because I've never written on a show, and was Louis the head writer at that time? Uh, Jeff Stilson. Oh, Stilson was. Yeah. So you're working with all these guys that you know, and you're trying to build it. Like it was a pretty provocative show. It was really mm-hmm. the first time that that I think you know, on a talk show format, that you know black issues are really dissected and and done every you know every show. Mm-hmm. So what was that like working in that environment? Did any like was there what was the conversation because most of the writing staff was white. And was it you know did Chris sit there with everything and every you know go over everything and it all went through Chris? Uh yeah, everything went through Chris. Yeah. Uh but you know it was like Chris, he never give, gave me any directive of, right. be, of you know, okay, we got to talk about black stuff or right. whatever. It yeah. was just uh, funny yeah. and, and just try to put everything, you know, in, in Chris's voice, you know, right. his, his sensibility. But then right. again, Chris also staff, you know, had had staff the, the you know, um, the writers for people who, who would, you know, would come up with things that he never would have thought right, of like right, louis ck right. you know and and chuck sklar because he he wanted all those elements you know right right so um so he didn't need a a whole you know like a, a black right. staff whatever. right yeah yeah um, yeah he just wanted you know some diversity as far as in in style more so than in what's you know. that who's that friend of his was he around too the guy who wrote for the village voice the um whoa. nelson george yeah yeah nelson nelson was a producer yeah, he was a producer on the show. So he, he handled more, more like the interviews, right. the guests and stuff like that. Yeah, he's a smart guy, but, man. Um yeah, but it was it was it was cool. It was it was a great I I I still credit Chris for uh everything that I know about 
TV and and you know yeah. and and doing a show and running a show yeah because he let us do that you know yeah. it's like we we you submit your jokes to Jeff Jeff takes the jokes to Chris Chris would check off the ones he wants to do and then that's you know that's the monologue for the monologue yeah, yeah and then we have a pitch meeting okay come in I need you know in studio yeah bits so yeah. we're all pitch Chris okay write that up write that up write that up yeah. And, you know. And you did, that was that the first time you did acting too? Yeah. So did you ever train to act or you just did it? Mm-mm. No. Just did it. Yeah. Yeah. And then I started taking classes and then I got nervous that the classes were going to mess me up because I, I thought I had, you know, because now I'm in my head yeah. thinking about stuff. So yeah. I was like, I don't know about the I don't know about these classes, man. <laughs> they made you more self conscious. Yes, like I don't need yes. technique. I yeah. just need to be me. I, I was who? Who's uh, Greg Geraldo was in the class with me. Oh yeah, yeah. Whose class was that? Um, was it that woman? Was it a woman? I can't. Yes, remember. Yes, we all went to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was like specialized Gosh. in comics or something. Yes, right? they were all in there, oh, huh? Geez. Dave Anthony. Yeah. Yeah, he's on my show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. wrote and he acted. He's in a lot of them. And I told him, I said, you know, when I was on this season of my show, I'm like, keep an eye on me. Because I know he's he's got a sense of uh-huh. it. Uh-huh. You know, he's pretty good with that. Uh-huh. All right, so you do the Chris Rock show for how many seasons? Uh, I don't know. How many seasons do we do? Know. Five? I don't and, know. And then yeah, as, for the full, whole run. And yeah. then is that how uh, you built the relationship with Louie? Yes. Yes. Although um, I was cool with Louie before we, you know, right. We did the show because actually when I when I started writing like that, I mean, like that first week or whatever, I would go to Louie. Yeah. <clears throat> and ask him, you know, for yeah. some guidance or help. Cause, like, you know, I'd never written on the show before. Right. So I'm like, and, and he would look over my stuff and go, OK, because I would just write out a long monologue. Right. You know, and then Louie's like, OK, this is OK. That, in there, that's that's a joke. That's a joke. But. <laughs> just, just, he said, just go read the newspaper. Just write topical jokes. He said, right, right. You know, so you're writing whole pieces. Yeah, like, I'm writing pieces, an man. Essay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm writing an essay. He's like, just, <laughs> he was like, this is a funny piece. He said, keep this. You know, you, you should do it. <laughs> you know, you, <laughs> you should do it. But, yeah, uh, yeah just read so the he, newspaper he and of, write some, yeah, and he, just write jokes on that. I was like, oh, okay, I can do that. He told you had to write monologue jokes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and did you get, you, everyone got a lot of jokes on you got the hang of it uh yeah did it help you like like it's weird when you write that type of joke because if you're like a storyteller or somebody talks about your own life it's got to be a skill that you you're grateful for Uh to be able to do that i when i when i had to write monologue jokes they're just it's always so boring to me Mm -hmm. like you know even if you write a good one it's like even if you wanted to use it like what are you gonna use it for a week and then it's over exactly (laughs) when did pootie tang happen uh pootie tang happened i think our last during our last season or during the break before yeah. going into our last season. Was they, that your first yeah. movie? No, actually, Louis um, had me do a little part in his movie uh, Tomorrow Night. Oh, yeah. The one with Chuck. Yeah. About the photographer. Sitting in ice cream. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sitting in, in <laughs> yeah, ice cream and, and doing yeah. pictures of the toilet. Right. Classic Louis. Yeah. What did you play in that? I'm trying to remember. Uh, I was someone's date. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was a. Was it, was it JB? Was JB Smooth in that movie? Too? He's in all his movies, I think. He's in, a, he's in a lot of them. I can't remember. I can't remember, but yeah, it was a party scene yeah, uh-huh. and uh, or wedding scene. Maybe it was at the wedding when Chuck when they got married right. or something. I don't know. It's funny working with Louie because you don't question anything. It's no, like, not okay. at all. <laughs> not at all. I guess this is uh, yeah. Know. Okay, Louie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Pootie Tang was like so close to being such a, a big deal. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then it became a big deal in the wrong way. Exactly. Your part was funny. You were dancing. Yeah. I remember that. Yep. On the Biggie street. Shorty. Yeah, Biggie yep. Shorty. Yeah, Biggie Shorty. And Lance yep. was Pootie Tang. Uh-huh. Like, the story of that movie, I mean, did you, you weren't part of it any, uh, other than acting, but God, what a, like, the, just the yeah. fact that he had a fight for, the, that was a real education for him. I know. When did you feel like you really broke out as a comic? Like, what was that moment? Because, I mean, like, I remember, like, well, there's Wanda. Well, now Wanda's doing all this stuff, and now Wanda's huge. Pro- well, I don't know about that. I, probably after, uh, I don't know, I I had I did a really good Comedy Central special, uh, Tongue Untied. That An hour? Was, yeah, that was well-received. But I think, yeah. uh, and then Sick and Tired, HBO special. Oh, that's big. that was big, right? Yeah, but I think, that, to me, I, the last one I did, you know, I'm Gonna Be Me, that was the one, I think, that yeah put me over the and that well, how when was that maybe maybe three years ago oh really yeah 
Huh. Yeah, it's time to do another one, I guess. Yeah. So, well, yeah. no, but I mean, like, I they, is that the one where you? you know, what What were your were your topics on that one? Because um, I don't. I'm not Obama. I, uh -huh. I did about. I did a bit about now that we have a black president that. Uh, you know, I don't have to be so dignified now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, it's yeah. like we made it. You know, <laughs> so it's, as I said before, you know, <laughs> like I said before, it's like I, I've always been dying to buy a whole watermelon, but I couldn't because you know, just felt like white people were looking at me. Right, and, you know, right. it's also it goes back to how I would how I was raised. You know, my mother. She never let us uh, dance in the car. Like, if we were riding in the car, she would tell us to, like, if a good song comes on, we're yeah. dancing. She would, like, stop the car and either, you know, tell us to stop dancing um, because she said white people were looking at you. you yeah. Know, white people looking at you. So, you know, she just thought that, you know, that's, it looks, looks bad. Well, she Because white people would look and go, look, see, that's see? all they do. <laughs> dance. That's all. They just cannot stop dancing. <laughs> cannot stop dancing. So she was aware of that. Oh, oh totally aware. I think I think a lot of black people are, especially growing up back, you know. So it's not just time. a matter of of you it, always want to come off as you know your self conscious. Don't, don't give them any ammunition, right? Of how they're looking don't, at you. Don't yeah, don't, don't fall play into, into the, the stereotype. stereotype. Yeah. Wow. Don't sit outside and eat watermelon on the porch. Just don't do that. <laughs> if you're gonna eat something, eat yeah. something else. Yeah. <laughs> get 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 a, get a cantaloupe. That's that's outdoor fruit. <laughs> that's your... How about a peach? Yeah, a peach. Eat a peach. Just... An apple. A peach. Stay away from the watermelon. Yeah. Don't eat watermelon uh, sitting outside. That's that self consciousness is crazy. Yeah. So yeah. that was your special where you're like, fuck it. You know, right. You know. Yeah, and I talked about you know uh, being married to a woman, you know, and all that, and having kids. Which, when did you start? Uh, when did you first, like? Wh how did you meet her, and how did that come about? Oh man, I met her in September um, of '06. Yeah, and uh, just it was it was crazy. It, it really was. It was like I, I saw her and and on a ferry going out to uh, uh, Cherry Grove, Far Island, and it just. It, but you were already out and in the world. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. Uh, so you were well, comfortable. I was, you know with what? That. I was out, but but not. Not talking the, about yeah it. The, the cnn scroll hadn't happened yet mm -hmm. yeah and uh, so but you were you were dating and whatnot mm -hmm. so it wasn't like it didn't take you by surprise like oh this is back right when you met right, her right right, right no no right. no. after the marriage it was just it's been all you know <laughs> it, women. it was on yeah it's, it's on it's on <laughs> it was, that was it yeah and you met her on a boat yeah and it just like it was just love at first love sight at first sight really yep that's sweet. Yeah. Did she feel that too? Actually, I actually heard, heard the something said, you know, uh, and I didn't even know it was about her. I turned and she was, she was sitting at the, at the back of this ferry and she was playing with this, uh, there was another woman holding a kid and she was playing with that kid. And yeah. I turned and looked and I, I, I mean, like it was audible. I heard something say, see Wanda, that, that's what you need. And I thought it was saying, Hey, you you need to find someone, settle down, have a family. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because you know, it was like I was I was already I was like in a in a crazy relationship at the time. This crazy chick, and what and kind I, of crazy? I was just um drama. Yeah, drama. <laughs> Let's just say drama, drama, <laughs> just drama. And I'm on my way to Fire Island. And all I'm thinking about is. You know, oh man, I, I got okay. She doesn't get here until tomorrow night. Yeah. So I got all tonight. <laughs> yeah. Just, just bad intentions. I was yeah. just full of just nothing yeah. but bad intentions. Yeah. Heading to the island. So when I heard that, I was like, yeah, well, okay, whatever. Uh huh. And uh, you know, it was like crazy stuff happened. The, the girl I was dating, I, you know, it was like, like kicking her out. But this is like on the boat though. How did you? Did you go talk to her? How did you? No, I didn't talk to her at all. I just, I just looked at her and I was like, wow, okay. And uh. And it wasn't until like the like the next day, I ran into her on on the island, mm -hmm. and uh, before your girlfriend got there, this was this was after. Uh huh. This was after I, we hadn't gotten to an argument, whatever. And yeah, I had to get rid of her. Um, well, you broke up with her that weekend. Yeah. <laughs> So you're fresh out of a breakup, fresh, like hours, I mean, hours. <laughs> I swear to you, hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. And my uh, and my friend, we were walking. We were walking around, and uh, and sh and she was like, "I don't understand how you keep beating these these crazy girls. What, yeah. You know what? What are you doing?" I'm yeah. like, well, "What do you mean?" She said, "Well, if you see a nice girl, what 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 do you do?" I said, "Well, you know, you know, I just just say hi and whatever." Yeah. And uh, and sh and she said, "Well, like, what do you talk about?" 
And I was like, well, just if she asked me, how's my day? I tell her, how's my day? She said, you actually say what your day is like? And during that time, I was re- I was remodeling my house, right? Yeah. I was redoing my kitchen. So I, she said, okay, so let, let me see. Let me, let me see what you're doing. So I went up to a girl. I was like, hey, how you doing? And uh, and girl was like, you know, no, I, no, no, this that was in L.A. That yeah. was in L.A. Yeah. And she's and she was like, so uh, <laughs> how you doing? And I said, you know, good and everything. And uh, and she asked me, you know, what my day was like. And and I said, well, I went to look at tile today because, uh, you know, but, but and my friend was just like, no, next time you talk to a girl, just say you're pretty. And yeah. That's it. Oh, just say your day is better now. And I was like, you are corny. I'm not doing that. It's crappy. You should try to give, me, give you some game. Yeah, yeah. And then she, <laughs> and she, and she goes, and don't talk about your stupid dog either. Nobody cares. No, don't, don't stop. Don't you do not. I swear, if you pull out of your phone and show pictures of your dog, I'm gonna throw your phone away. No, right. Don't do it. I'm like, All yeah. Right. So we're walking around and we run into. Uh, she runs into a friend, mm-hmm. and it's, you know, so they stop and she introduces me to her friend, and she goes, "Hey, Wanda, how you doing? How, how's it going?" And I looked at my friend, I looked at the girl, and I said, "Well, I'm redoing my kitchen, you know." And, and <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> I got some new tiles. <laughs> and, yeah. she, and she goes, oh, really? Well, you need to meet my friend Alex. She she uh, sells granite and marble. That's her job. And I look. It's it's her. It's her. Oh, I'm so glad you fought your and friend on it. that one. Yeah. So and did you talk been about together ever marble? since. Yep. <laughs> been together ever since. <laughs> and that's been, what, seven or eight years? Yep. Wow. Mm-hmm. So you just locked in. Mm-hmm. And you're married. Mm-hmm. Where'd you get married? Uh, P- Palm Springs. Oh, really? So recently, yeah. how long? In 08. Yeah. Right at the first wave. Right at, yeah. Right, right when it was legal. And that stuck out here. October, you, yeah. yeah October there was never 08. any of those. Right. Like, no, they're, not, they're right. not legal anymore. Right. It's solid. Right. Palm right. Springs. Mm-hmm. And the kids, you have two kids. Two kids. Did, did, did you they're have twins. them? They're twins. No, 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 no. She had them. She had them. Yeah. And where'd you get the stuff? Uh, we got the stuff from a, uh, a sperm bank, anonymous. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. And, and it came out okay. Came out okay. They're they're gorgeous. <laughs> gorgeous. What now? What is the? How does blonde one... hair, blue eyes? Oh yeah. Yeah. Look like we got them from IKEA. <laughs> 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 what? But what is the process of picking sperm? How does that work? Um. Basically, you look for uh longevity you look for for a healthy donor and like if 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 they're like saying like they, their grandparents uh-huh. are still alive and uh-huh. healthy uh-huh you know uh-huh. that's 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 good so they have to they have all that information oh yeah they have to fill out all of that stuff like i'm afraid to, to even go back too far with my lineage like i've never <laughs> you know like i just know like eastern european jews it can't end well for anybody <laughs> i know <laughs> you know have you ever tracked your um. lineage uh, actually, I uh, I did that show with uh, uh, Doctor Gates, Doctor Henry Lewis Gates, yeah. on PBS. He yeah. does that uh, uh, finding your roots. Oh, really? Yeah, fascinating. Yeah, my three grand, the three of my grandparents. Yeah, like um, both grandparents on my mother's side, they couldn't uh, they couldn't trace. Right, they couldn't go back to, to go back far. My father's father couldn't do anything, but my father's mother. They were able to go back to 1650. What? That's yeah. That's the farthest he's ever been able to go back with an African American person. That's crazy. 1650. And, yeah, and it's it's because they traced it back to Elizabeth Banks. Um, she they think she came over from Scotland, but as an indentured servant. So, a white in slave. Virginia. Yeah, yeah, indentured so, servant, and she came into to to Virginia, and uh, she. Got pregnant by a Negro slave, but back then it's it was all the condition of the mother. So she was technically a free white woman. She right. was just indentured servant. Right. So right. she was free. So the baby was uh, free, and that started that whole Your line, dad's line, yeah, of free Negroes. That's crazy. And at one point, it, it got at one point they actually owned slaves too. The black people yeah. did. Yeah. Huh. But I I think it was they were actually trying to. Like, like you buy their family, them. yeah. Protect their uh, other family members. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. I don't even. Isn't know that how, crazy? How do you go back? That I you- know. Well, there, well, there was documents they had where um, 
uh, like they they saw where Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth Banks was charged for uh, bastardy and um, and you know and having sex with the yeah. Isn't that weird the that slave. the the only reason that you could trace your genealogy because is a white woman? Yep, that's the only reason why, and the only reason why we continue to trace because of the uh, the the, ne- the other Negroes were free, so there's documentation. Wow. Yeah. That must have been pretty moving. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was like, wow, this is crazy. So how did you, um, like, I know you tried the talk show thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was, uh, and you had Keith. You brought Keith in. Yep. Did, were you disappointed about that? Did yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. How, I, I was. What What went wrong with that, you think? What went wrong with that? Because um, I remember you Fox were, had an idea. They came to me and said, hey, we want to do a talk show with you. Yeah. I, I, I didn't even go looking for it. Right. I just said, okay. And uh, and so you know we put it together and you know John Ridley, God bless him, he he did a he did a great job and he was really trying to to, to uh, you know facilitate what I what I wanted to do what I had envisioned. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know honestly it it was just it was it was hard it was just too much and with the. You know, we we didn't have enough time to 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 gel as far as right. especially with the monologue. You know, we yep. they they didn't want me to do a uh, a, a typical monologue because right. we also had the other part where we would do basically you know a weekend update right. pretty much. So it was um the yeah you like just, just trying to pick a one that, topic that it just yeah couldn't fall into place right it was just a little right a, a, but yeah but the, but I think if we would have stayed with it it would you know we would have yeah. figured it out but. It, was, it was always fun to see Keith laughing yeah <laughs> and then after that you got the gig with uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus actually I was doing that at the same time I was doing I got old Christine first I think she's a, old Christine I think she's and then a, I started doing that a comedy genius she is. You guys were so good together. Oh. Like, I'd watch that show. Yeah. It's a good show. Thank you. Well, Thank no, you. I like her. I like you. And, like, you know, it was one of those weird things where, I, and now I think she's getting, you know, her, the respect that she deserves, you know, with the Veep thing. But, right. like, it, to, to work with somebody that the dynamic was just so defined. Mm-hmm. Like, you were like, oh, Christ, you know, what's going on? Right. And she was like, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> How many seasons did you do with that? We did, was it six, five or six? And did you guys become friends? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. She, I mean, uh, did you learn anything from her? Because you know, she's like, as a comedic actress, it's kind of like... It, it, she's uh, fun to watch. Yeah. Fun to watch, you know? <laughs> right, yeah. I, I love watching her. Yeah. And I love her process. I mean, she if it's like a physical thing, she really works it out. And, she does? Yeah. So the, she, she times she out the works, beats. Yeah. See, that's she works a, it out. See, to she me, really that's... Uh, her, her work ethic is... You know, but like she really, you know, but she loves doing it, so she really approaches it. But but that's right like way. like you think because I always think that people that are physically funny, it's just some weird gift, mm-hmm. which it is. Mm-hmm. But you're telling me that if if there were beats, physical beats to a joke, she would plot it out. Oh yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I, I love knowing that. Yeah. Because I never think that way. Do you? No. <laughs> like, I just want to say the thing. Yeah, I just want to say the thing. Yeah. But she, yeah, she she figures it out. Wow. Yeah. Now because, what you know, it's like okay, I know the camera's going to be here and whatever, and okay, does this work if I do it this way? Really, you know, yeah. And Andy, Andy Ackerman was he was great. Yeah, it was so much. I mean, it was so nice having one director. And that guy who plays know? the ex husband is a really gifted comedic oh, actor. Yeah, he's Clark one of those Craig. guys that you see him in serious roles and you're like, yeah, it's good, but like that, to do that deadpan, yeah. that weird thing he does, he's yeah. got a weird. Uh, he's got a weird thing about him uh-huh. that's very funny. Yeah. So I didn't really love that. I love that whole cast. It was it was so much fun being on that show. Yeah. What uh, I didn't realize that you you did the White House Correspondence Theater. You did oh, that. Oh yeah, I did his, his for his first uh, the first year. And how, that must have been amazing. That was. It was. It was. I, I still look back and go, man, I should have taken more pictures. You know, <laughs> I really. <laughs> Didn't anyone get pictures? I, we I had a few pictures or like some of like my half of my, you know, like an eye is missing or uh-huh. whatever. I'm like, man, I say I might have to pay Getty and get some pictures. This is so what? Up. Yeah, you could get them. Yeah. yeah. Did did you w- did you spend time with him? Um, before the dinner, there's like this little reception. It's yeah. like and it's maybe 
a couple hundred people right. in this little room yeah. when he comes in and says hello yeah. to the, you know, yeah. to the big people, I guess, whatever. But uh, um, it was just so bizarre because it's like you, you look and say, oh, there's a, uh, there's a. Uh, Katie and Tom Cruise uh-huh. stay in the middle of the floor. And you look over and it's like, oh, there's Madeline Albright. And, uh-huh. you know, and you and, and, go, yeah, and it's like, this is crazy. But I can't, I would, I would, I just don't, I think I would fall apart. Like I, like the, the, the fact that you were able to get up there and do that in front of those people, I guess they're just people. But right. like when I always think about like not having those kind of opportunities, it's, I think like it's probably better off. Cause <laughs> like, yeah, as soon as one joke didn't work, I'd be like, what the fuck is your problem? <laughs> But you like got to keep your shit together, right? Right. Well, my my approach was I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna keep it keep it short, and you know, get some big laughs. Did you interact yeah. with uh, Obama? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he just yeah. took it like yeah. a pro. Yeah. He seems like a pretty funny guy. I can't get his, like it's weird. Even though he's president, I can't I can't get a full sense of him as a person. Do you? I do. Yeah. Yeah. He. I mean. He comes off as like the, like pretty much like common sense, uh-huh. you know. Uh huh. Um, he's he's very bright. I mean, you know, just really smart guy. Um, so you think but, and when I talked to him, it, it was I mean, he has the ability where he, he you, you you feel he's it? he's connected. You, you're, yeah, he's connected. He's not looking over your shoulder to go. Oh, yeah, it's Tom Cruise. You know, it's it's. Well, you would hope not. Yeah, right. <laughs> Right, he, he doesn't get distracted, which is good. So, so, he so he's he's he makes you feel like you're being seen, and that you know. Yes, but he you also feel that you matter, right? Yeah. And in your mind, though, you're like, "That's a fucking president," right? That's still there, right? There was yeah. never like that moment where you're like, "This is some guy." No, he, he feels like the president. He feels like the president. Isn't that wild? Feels like the president. Yeah, the first lady feels like the first lady. Yeah, I I both of them. I did. I said, "Mr. President, yes, sir." I was very, you know, I didn't, you know, "Hey, Michelle." No, I did not. It was, you know, because well, I I saw Clinton once, and mm-hmm. you know, there's that moment where you like, well, you you, you want to see them as people. And they are people, right? But they're like, there's something other. Like, I don't know if it's our own brains doing it, but like, that's the fucking president, right? The United States just standing there, like he, like I was at some event because my buddy worked for him, and he was doing a photo line. Uh huh. It was almost like like he had this weird ability to just be there, but completely not be there. Like you know, he was just standing there, and it was the president. And these people uh-huh. are at a big money event, so they're taking pictures. Taking with him. pictures. But he was just he just found this one frequency of politeness and connection. And then he just did the yeah. whole line. But that's the weird thing about politicians. It's like, yeah, they're the president, but they're also they're just politicians. That's all. So what about her? What about Michelle? Did you, did you, did you, I want, Stunning, I, for some reason, uh, warm. Yeah. Uh, she was, yeah. I mean, she, I, she when, when we met, because uh, my wife was with me, Alex was with me, and she had just given birth. So uh, I introduced her to, you know, to the first lady. And... She turned to Alex and she was like, you mean you put up with her? And, and we all were laughing. <laughs> and uh, and sh- and she was talking to Alex about France because she was she was saying that she's going to take the girls. They were planning a trip to go to France. So yeah. they were talking about you right. know, France a little bit because Alex is French. So she is. Yeah. She's from France. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But now she's also from Philly. <laughs> She's from Philly but by way you, of France. Let her tell it. She, you know, she's always from France. I mean, she's she's uh she's a citizen now. She's naturalized. But so she speaks with a French accent. Yeah, fancy. Mm-hmm. Do you go to France? Oh, uh, all the time. Really? Yeah. You yeah, love we're it? going. We're going in again in what in July. Now, yeah. can you speak French yet? A little bit. No, a you little don't bit. need to if you got someone there right, for you. Exactly. It's, it must be nice to go to France with someone who speaks French. Yes. Does she have family there? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. exciting. All, all her family is there. So, so actually, you, her, her family comes here a lot, too. To so did you ever think in your life that that would be part of your life? No. Isn't that wild? No. I, well, you know, yeah. I Me mean, married to to this, you know, beautiful white French woman. And <laughs> I have two, you know, little blonde-haired, blue-eyed kids. Really? The girl from Virginia? The country girl from Virginia. The country girl from Virginia who used to like, like yeah, who's, who's whose husband yeah, right, right. Used to sit in the back of the room uh-huh. going, when we leaving. Right, right. Unbelievable. Bizarre. Do you, do you sometimes just wake up and go like, how the fuck? What the hell? That's so All lucky. the time. Really? All the time. I wake up and I just look around like, what the hell? <laughs> how did this happen? How did I get in? Do you, are you grateful? Yes, I am. I am. But also... uh. 
just—it's just all bizarre. Yeah. You know, I—I I, I really, I think, like, what the hell? What are you doing? You gotta pinch what? yourself, like, yeah. Wait, wait. What? Yeah. What? What's? This is crazy. Oh, I can't even imagine it. You know. Yeah. It's like, it, and I'm. <laughs> It's like you, you know, I wake up in the middle of the night, and, yeah. and although it's it's like one of the scariest things ever, yeah, uh, because you know the kids are five, the twins, right? So mm-hmm. it's it's one of the scariest things ever to wake up in the middle of the night and see two little white kids standing at the edge of your bed. It's some creepy shit. <laughs> it's just creepy. <laughs> it's creepy. Because there's like, a moment where yes, you're like, what, what, what the yeah. hell? Yeah. What are these crazy little white kids what doing did, at the foot of my bed? Yeah, what did I do? Yeah, what right, of- right. What kind of horror movie is this? What is this? <laughs> and then you go like, oh, they're, oh, they're, my they're mine. <laughs> oh, shit. They're my kids. They're my kids. Uh, they're crying because you look so frightened. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> what, what happened? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, I was, yeah, I was it, dreaming that I was living the life that I was uh, as a child. Right, you know, like, right. Oh, yeah. oh, my God. That's but they hilarious. crawl into bed with us, and it's it's... It's bizarre. It really is. And they've been with you the whole time. I mean, it's, it's it, and they. It's uh, yeah. And that's the thing with kids. They they. That's all they know. There's they, no they, col- they, there's, there's no color line. They're no. not. Yeah. It doesn't uh-uh. even. I imagine they'll ask questions eventually. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, but of that course. hasn't happened yet. Um, a couple. Well, they'll say things like, "Okay, like my friend so and so, they have." A mommy and a daddy, but but right. so I just have two mommies, right? right. Like, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, right. <laughs> and they take that information, they go away, and then they it's beautiful. Yeah, and I, I heard uh, my daughter explain that she met some girl on the on the uh, was playing with another little girl on the beach, mm-hmm. and uh, and she came over to ask me something, and you know I said yeah whatever, and she went back, and the little girl asked asked her. So that's that's your mommy. She was like, yeah, that's my that's my mommy, and that's my and that's my mommy too. And the little girl looked at him and went like, oh, okay. And they both, you know, and they just kept playing. It wasn't it, it, any, you're going to hell, or how dare you. Know, it wasn't that, anything. It was just, oh, okay. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Because it, like, it's, it's at those moments where you realize that all that bad shit is put in them. Right. You yeah. know, it, like yeah. there's no judgment, really. None. It's just sort of None. like, all right, I'm a kid, right. and now right. we have kid stuff to deal with. Exactly. No wrong or right or moral yeah. judgments. Mm-hmm. It's sort of it's. There's like a lot of hope in that, but there's also that sad element. Oh, you, it's that, coming. Like, yeah, something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's coming. They're bo- so you have two girls. No, a boy and a girl. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. That, well, that's there's balance. Yeah. Well, you seem great. I'm so glad you were able to do this. Thank you. Me too. Thanks for doing it. No problem. That's it. That's the show, folks. Um. And again, a little audio mishap at the end there, but it was great to talk to Wanda. It was great to see Wanda, and I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, go to WTFPod.com for all your WTF Pod needs. Uh, pick up that app for free and upgrade to premium. Stream all the hundreds of ep- episodes available. Hundreds of episodes. I'm tired. Uh, what else? Yeah, you can get some merch. You can leave a comment. A comment If you have a Facebook page, you can uh, you peruse the episode guide. You can pick up some JustCoffee.coop. All right. Okay. Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? I'm not finding that I miss liver mush. You know, I'm not like, shit, man, I wish I had that here. I could probably go find it. That's the kind of thing that people move to other places and they, they, they're they sad about not being able to find and they usually find one proprietor that might uh, have the liver mush and they become the you know one of three people that... It buys the liver mush, and then you got to sort of question whether or not how long has the liver mush been standing around? How long has it been around? Is that a fresh brick? I bet you I could find a comic that 